Hi everyone, welcome back to Anatomy Everywhere YouTube channel. We are going to discuss about the overview of brachial plexus. Brachial plexus are formed by anterior rami of C5 to C8 and T1 spinal nerve roots. These five roots located between the scalenus anterior and scalenus medius muscles. Five roots unite to form three trunks. Upper two unite to form the superior or upper trunk. Then the lower two unite to form the lower trunk. And the central root runs as the middle trunk. Trunks are located in the lower part of the posterior triangle of the neck. Then each trunk divided into anterior and posterior divisions behind the clavicle. Therefore, the divisions located behind the clavicle. At the outer border of the first rib, the upper two anterior divisions unite to form the lateral cord and all three posterior divisions unite to form the posterior cord. Anterior division of the lower trunk runs as the medial cord. Therefore, cords arranged around the second part of the axillary artery. If you can remember, the axillary artery also can be divided into first, second and third part in relation to the psoas minor muscle. Therefore, up to now, we have roots, trunks, divisions and cords. These three cords enter the axilla above the first part of the axillary artery. They embrace the second part of the axillary artery and gives off their branches around the third part. Therefore, the location of the cords within the axilla around the second part of the axillary artery. Axillary sheath, which is the extension of the prevertebral fascia in the neck, surrounds the axillary artery and therefore surrounds the cords as well. If happen to administer local anesthetics into the axillary sheath, produce a brachial plexus nerve block as well. There are some variations except this typical arrangement of the brachial plexus. One is prefixed plexus. It happens rarely. In 10% of the population, we are a significant contribution to brachial plexus from the anterior ramus of C4 and a reduction of contribution from T1. Therefore, in prefixed plexus, brachial plexus consists from the contribution of C4 to C8. Another one is postfixed plexus, where it receives a substantial contribution from T2 and reduced input from C5. It is also happens in 10% of the population. Medial cord frequently receives fibers from the anterior ramus of C7, which is another variation. If you can remember, the medial cord receives the contribution from C8 and T1. Other variations may also can occur of the formation of trunks, divisions and cords, but the contribution from spinal cord segments to the branches remain constant. So up to now, we have roots, trunks, divisions, cords, and the branches. For easiness for you to remember, I assigned a few numbers to these branches. Three branches from the roots, one branch from the trunk, no branches from the divisions, and cords give three five five manner. It means lateral cord give three branches, and a medial cord give five branches and the posterior cord give five branches as well. These are the three branches from the roots. Dorsal scapular nerve, which is the nerve to rhomboids, and long thoracic nerve, nerve to serratus anterior, and the nerve to subclavius. Suprascapular nerve is the only one branch from the trunk. It supplies supraspinatus muscle and the infraspinatus muscle. Lateral cord gives three branches. These are lateral pectoral nerve, 
muscular cutaneous nerve and lateral root of median nerve. All three supplied by C5 to C7. Medial cord again give five branches. This is easy to remember as many of them starts with medial word. Medial root of the median nerve, medial pectoral nerve, ulnar nerve, medial cutaneous nerve of the arm, medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm. Posterior could also give five branches. Upper subscapular nerve, thoracodosal nerve, lower subscapular nerve, axillary nerve and radial nerve. We'll discuss in detail about these branches in another video. Bye-bye then. Subscribe and join us for more lessons on human anatomy.